Okay, so we're back here continuing to talk about uh, how to com compute engineering design parameters for pipes for fluid flow problems. And I uh, made a couple other videos looking at how you can compute the head loss in a pipe. That is the loss associated with friction and energy. Uh, or you can compute the flow rate if you know the, the head loss and the, the diameter. And so in this video, I want to show how to compute the di diameter that is required for a, a specific flow rate that is uh, needed for a fluid, uh, given the amount of head loss that there is, or the amount of head that's available. So um, in this kind of problem, so you might want to look at those other videos before you watch this one. Uh, in this video, these are more complicated than the other videos. We looked at how you can use the Moody chart to uh, compute the value of the friction factor. And the, the friction factor depends on the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. And so when you're computing pipe diameter, it is more difficult. And that is because both the relative roughness and the Reynolds number depend on the diameter. So these are harder to solve. Um, often, we will have the head loss as one of the given parameters and so in that situation we're working with the Darcy Weisbach equation to understand the relationship between the head loss and diameter and so if you rearrange the the um, Darcy Weisbach equation which is normally written like this you can rearrange it this tells us how much head loss given these other things if you want to solve for the diameter and you know the flow rate uh, you can use this version note the one-fifth power here or the fifth root or if you're solving for uh, velocity here you can do it this way a little bit easier but often we have the flow rate that's what's given so we need this much uh, fluid and we know that there's this much head that can move it and so what diameter do we need to get that much flow okay so again in these problems we don't know the friction factor and we also don't know the, the things that we use to compute the friction factor, which are the relative roughness and the Reynolds number. And so the way that we are going to solve these, these are going to be iterative solutions. Uh, we're just going to guess a diameter, pick something. And so most likely we're not going to pick right the first time, and so we have to do iteration, meaning we, we make an assumption and then we follow the logic until we are done. So we'll pick a value for the diameter, and we're going to have to look up the values of the fluid properties and the pipe material that we need. So the pipe material height, roughness height here, uh, fluid properties which go into the Reynolds number. So we pick D and then we can compute these things and uh, then we can get a value for the friction factor and then we can use the friction factor here with this version of the Darcy Weisbach equation to compute the the diameter that is implied by that. So we pick a diameter we use it to get the friction factor here via these other numbers and then we compute the diameter and we need to repeat this cycle over and over again until the value we guess here at the beginning is the one we compute here in step five okay so we do this again and again and again if we pick a value for the diameter here and then compute a value there and use this value that we computed back in step one if we do it iteratively uh, you should get to a solution pretty quickly usually within two maybe three levels of iteration. If you randomly pick here in step one, you will be at this for a very long time, most likely until you get something that uh, closes, what we say is closure. Okay, so we're going to use this version of the equation and then we follow the logic through. All right, once we're done, then we have to make one last step here and that is to round up to the nearest uh, pipe that's an appropriate diameter. So if you find that the pipe that you need is 11.237 inches you're not going to be able to get an 11.237 inch pipe you'll have to round up to a one foot pipe that's the last step the nearest size that's available okay all right so let's look at this um, look at an example here and so here we're supposed to find the diameter of a copper pipe needed for 10 cubic feet per second of water at 70 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius and the head loss is going to be about 20 feet per mile of pipe in this example. Okay, so we're going to need, again, we have these five different kinds of variables which you talked about in the previous examples. We have the fluid properties, the roughness height that's associated with the material of the pipe, and then we have the head loss, and then we have the flow rate, and then we have the diameter. So usually we can look up values for fluid and pipe materials, and so here we're looking at a copper pipe, so 
we can go get a roughness height from a table and we have a supplemental data file that we can go to and copper pipe is going to generally be pretty smooth so it has a really low roughness height 0.005 feet and we need to look up the right units here so this problem is given in US units so we need to use feet and not meters or millimeters flow rate we were told is 10 cubic feet per second 10 cubic feet per second the kinematic viscosity of water which has the density and viscosity in it that we can use in Reynolds numbers calculations is 1.05 times 10 to the minus fifth square feet uh, per second here at that temperature the head loss we are told is 20 feet the length of the pipe is a mile uh, so 5,280 feet I'm just going to go ahead and do that unit conversion because we're going to need to have everything in feet eventually and then we'll need the value of G to do these calculations and we want to make sure that we use 32.2 feet per second squared and don't use uh, meters okay so pretty straightforward again we can just follow the procedure that I outlined in the last page so when we're going to guess something and so in this one I'm just going to guess one foot okay there might be smarter ways that you can guess uh, a number here but uh, for this one I'm just going to start with one foot it's a nice round number and really then all we have to do is follow the logic okay so one foot for uh, D and so then we can compute the relative roughness and that's 0 .00005 zeros 5 feet divided by 1 foot which is of course divide by 1 it's the same thing so 5 zeros and a 5 and it's dimensionless because we use this dimensionless analysis to get the dimensionless friction number friction factor we can also get the Reynolds number here which uh, you can we could compute so given Q and then this guess for D we could compute V and add an extra step in there I'm uh, gonna compute Reynolds number from Q and so if you rearrange the Reynolds number equation to have Q in it instead of V it's 4Q over pi D uh, nu okay so this ends up being 4 divide times uh, 10 cubic feet per second over pi D is one foot and new is 1.05 times 10 to the minus fifth feet squared per second and that gives me a value of 1.2 times 10 to the sixth and dimensionless of course these are both dimensionless and so once you have those two you can either use the Moody chart or the Swami Jane equation to uh, get the value of the friction factor so plug these two things into the Swami Jane equation either way is fine and you should get basically the same answer in the end to two significant figures so I will do it with the Moody chart here again so remember the Moody chart here we have the Reynolds number on the x-axis and then we have the relative roughness on the y-axis so we have to find the right dark line to follow and then find the right spot for the Reynolds number and then read off the friction factor over here okay uh, and so again these problems are harder because uh, when we're solving for head loss we can figure out exactly where we're at on the Moody chart and look up F directly when we don't know the flow rate or the velocity then that means we don't know where we're at on the x-axis but we can still figure out which of these dark lines we need to follow for the relative roughness so we're somewhere on that line we can move around and then look it up and this one we don't know which line we're on either so that that's what makes these harder we don't know where we are left or right and we don't know where we are in this but uh, anyway we can make a guess and then we just follow it through so you often have to iterate several times because you're moving around more uh, alright so we have 0 0.05 and this one is harder because uh, you see these lines are more curvy when you get to the small roughness height so 0 0.05 is this line right here and then the Reynolds number that we uh, got was 1.2 times 10 to the 6th so here's 10 to the 6th and here's that line so they basically collapse to a smooth pipe and so you can see it's about it's between these two lines so 0, .0 sorry on the chart so it's between uh, these two lines so again this is 0 .01 0 .015 that means these have to be going up by 0 .001 so this is 0 .011 0 .010 this is 0.011, this is 0.012, and we're in between these two, so we're going to get about 0.0115 approximately. 
So we'll say for Moody, we get that f is about 0.0115. Okay, and then we can use our version of the Darcy-Weisbach equation to solve for d and see if that was, if it gives us the same thing that we guessed, which we think would it's pretty unlikely to just guess right on the first shot, but we'll see. So 8FLQ squared over pi squared GHL all to the fifth, one fifth power or the fifth root of that. So 8 times 0 0.0115 and L here is 5,280 feet and Q is 10 cubic feet per second and that is squared over pi squared, so 3.1415 squared, and then g is 32.2 feet per second squared, and then the head loss we said is 20 feet. And all that to the fifth, one-fifth power gives us a value of 1.5 feet approximately. Okay, so this is not equal to the one foot that we guessed. That means that we need to keep iterating. So at this point we could just randomly guess a new number, but that wouldn't be very smart. What we should do is use the number we just computed when we go back here. So our next guess, we're going to go back here to, uh, so use as new guess. Okay, and so that's like step one. So now we go back to, yeah, so, so we need to iterate And we're going to go back to step two, which is E over D compute computation. So here we've got now point one, two, three, four, five zeros and a five over. I'm going to leave the units off because we don't have to do any unit conversions here. And now we have 1.5 feet. And so E over D then becomes point oh 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 three three. Okay. Uh, and then the Reynolds number becomes 4 times 10 over again. It's the same thing as up here. Pi times 1.5 now, and then 1.05 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that is the equal to 8 times 10 to the fifth. Okay. And now we can compute the new value of F. So we'll go to the Moody chart again, and we get that F is so 0.0033. Yeah, so 001 there, and then five. So it's kind of like between those two lines, and you see that those are basically the same line. Once you get to Reynolds' number that is below about five times ten to the sixth. And in this one, we're 8 times 10 to the 5th, so we're way over here. And <clears throat> let's see, right about there. So this is just above that uh, line on the left here, so just above that mark, so 0 0.012. Uh, maybe a little bit above that line, so 0 0.0125. <coughs> and... All right, let's see. So now we can compute uh, the value of the diameter and 8 times 0 0.0125, 5280, 10 squared over pi squared times 32.2 times 20. So everything there stays the same except for the value of f, I think, and to the one-fifth, of course. And that gives me 1.53 feet, okay? So this isn't exactly, um, isn't exactly 1.5, but again, we're hoping for two significant figures. And so if we did a third round of iteration using this, the change would be very, very small. Okay, so once the changes start to become small, we, we can say we're good because we'll usually each time you'll get about one more significant figure. Okay, and again, there are other sources of uncertainty here that are bigger than that. So uh, remember the last thing we need to do then is we get D is equal to 1.53 inches. That's the required one. And so that's about equal to 18. 
sorry, 1.53 feet, not inches, and that's about 18.5 inches, and so we would probably need to round up to maybe 20 inches if we had a 20 inch pipe uh, that was available. Again, to make sure that we get a little factor of safety, and um, because of course you can't buy just any size pipe. Okay, so that's how you can go through the iterative process. And you know, last comment there, we use the Moody chart here to get F. You could also use the Swami Jane equation, and you can use this approach with a computer. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, steps here in this calculation. It's much easier to do this with a computer, and if you use the a formula, then you can. Uh, eliminate the need to look things up in the Moody chart which means you can also have a computer to do that and so I will make some videos where we go through that uh, next